The trigonometry we've looked at so far is useful for calculating the values of the sides and the angles of a right angle triangle. If we place the triangle onto the Cartesian plane, this allows us to extend the uses of the trigonometric ratios to any angle measured from the positive x-axis and the resulting line segment. Let me show you. We'll place a triangle with the reference angle A at the origin like this. Let's label the coordinates of point C as x and y. Then the distance from A to B on the triangle is just x. This is the side next to or adjacent to the reference angle. The distance from B to C will be y units. And this is the side opposite the reference angle. We have moved y units up from the axis to get to C. What label can we use for the hypotenuse? Well, this hypotenuse can also be seen as the radius of a circle with its center at the origin. So we'll use an R for radius to represent the hypotenuse. So in this triangle, sine theta is y divided by r, cos theta is x divided by r, and tan theta is y divided by x. You've seen this before. Now, let me show you something. If we take away line AB and line BC, we are left with a line segment that goes from the origin to point C. This line has been placed at an angle of 30 degrees measured from the positive x-axis. What's more, because this line segment is a radius from a circle centered at the origin, we could move it to create a different angle with the x-axis. Watch what happens when we turn the radius, keeping the origin as the center, to make a bigger angle with a positive x-axis. Let's stop turning the line segment here, where theta equals 60 degrees. Can you work out the value of sine 60 degrees? The length of the radius r hasn't changed. It has a measurement of 5 units. We can draw in a line perpendicular to the x-axis, like this. That gives us a new right angle triangle. This perpendicular distance is the same as the y-coordinate of our point C. So that's 4,33. So now sine 60 degrees is 4,33 divided by 5. Working that out on a calculator, you get sine 60 degrees is 0, 0,866. Now let's see what happens if we make the angle between the radius and the positive x-axis bigger. If I move the radius to here, I can draw in a right angle triangle. Do you see that the distance x is shorter now and the distance y is longer? But the line segment, the r value, hasn't changed. Once again, we find sine of this angle and we will get 0, 0,985. So, we can rotate the line segment R about the origin. As the line moves, the angle here between the x-axis and the line keeps changing. For each position of the line segment, we can find sine of the angle. If we wanted to, we could also find cosine of the angle or tan of the angle.